So this talk is going to be about uh, using the NVIDIA AI Workbench and running the Kaggle competition containers locally in the Workbench so that you don't have to, you know, you can either use the Kaggle resources or if you're playing around with something bigger and you're going to burn up all whatever the budget is, you can, uh, this uh, project for the NVIDIA AI Workbench might be a way to get around that and run it all locally, which is cool. And so the competition we're going to do is this permanent competition that they've got that's basically got this digit recognizer they've got a set of data um, that you uh, has handwritten digits and your idea is to try and recognize those digits right so as with all build and train um, there's a test there's a training data the training data contains a 28 by 28 thing uh, images and it contains what the digit actually represents this is a zero through nine and then there's test data that you actually run once you're trained, you run against your model against the test data and you upload basically what you think the digits were that were in the test data and that becomes your competition submission, right? So we're going to use uh, this NVIDIA AI Workbench example competition kernel, which is basically the Kaggle Docker Python with GPU support containers with a some syntactic sugar wrapped them around it by the NVIDIA team. And then they also created a couple notebooks that let you download the data, one notebook to process the data and one notebook to submit the results. So let's um, look at that a little bit. Uh, oh, I, I went through this a couple times. So we can see that this is actually, we cloned this project from the Kaggle competition kernel. By default, it's set up for the digits competition, but you can use it for anything. Um, there's a minimal, and you can see that the kernel we're actually using is the Python base with GPU support. That's actually what they built this workbench project around. And the only thing that's probably a little different you got to do in here, you're going to set up your Kaggle username and your key. That's so that you can get access to the data and submit as yourself when you're done with the test. And then we have a couple mounts in that so that the test and the train data uh, can go outside of the Docker container and then you can you know, not have to download it if you blow away your image or whatever. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do here is, um, so that's it, right? Let's see, file browser, yeah, that's just the project. And these are the settings I just talked about. And so now I'm gonna go back and uh, show you the, all right, so it turns out uh, in this project, right? There's a, a bunch of things that manage the AI workbench and, um, then we go into the Kaggle directory and there's an input data directory and output data directory, which is where the results are gonna go. And then we have a working directory, which I think should be probably called code instead, but like nobody asked me. So what this does, um, the first one here, because we already have the Kaggle uh, username and the key, uh, we're going to download the competition data set and you can see here that the competition name is digit recognizer why is that cool because we can actually change this to another competition we'll download their data as long as we have the keys and we can see here that we pulled down 15 megabytes of data right so we have um the training data which we're going to uh split um right you know how you split the training data so you train with part of it and then you verify with the part of it right um, and then we have the test data, which is actually what we're going to use um, for, uh, we're going to run our model against and what the results of that are going to be uploaded to the competition. So um, if we look at what's happening, and so they broke this apart, download, process, submit. And in this case, we're again, we're using the Kaggle GPU container. And so we're going to do just some basic stuff in here, which I'm not really going to go through. Uh, so there's just some processing steps here. You can see that we read the train and the test data. So we have training data and test data. Um, and then what we're going to do is, uh, and then we allocate some of the, um, basically we just create some storage for this thing, right? And um, uh, what it does is it prints the size of these and how big they are and blah, blah, blah. So the main difference between the training data and the test data is the training data knows what digit it is. It has an extra column and the test data doesn't. And then if we go and we look at the training data um, and we plot it, it turned, I thought this was really cool actually, because it's a, a linear array, they just plot the array of dots and that actually gives shows us some samples of what these digits look like. These are the first nine digits in the training data. Um, and then it just goes through the normal calculate a model and then it defines the model and then um, 
I don't remember what this is. This is something on my machine. Uh, and then we go and we train the model. Now, what is a training model, right? A training model, what we're going to do is we're going to tune the hyperparameters. We're going to take the features that we created, uh, which is actually the test uh, training data. And then we're going to run at a portion of the model. We're going to train the model, adjusting the parameters. Um, and then we're going to calculate the miss. And then we're going to try and tune those parameters to close in, right? And so in this case, this is actually when we run a fit, right? We have the training fit that we're going to do. And remember, with the training data, we know what the answer is going to be. And so we can try and build a model against that. So it turns out we run, um, I thought it was 20. We run 20 steps. Yeah, epics. So we run 20 different training steps, trying to tune in this model and get it closer to do the curve fitting. Uh, and then we can send this thing in, right? And if we look at what happened here, so the only thing I wanted to show is it took 65, uh, 50 seconds on my RTX 3060 Ti. So if you have a bigger box, it'll go way faster. Uh, they they said some of them are down in the 20 second range. My fastest, biggest car, my, my bit fastest one was like 40 seconds. Okay, so, um, and then it plots with the accuracy and you can see here uh, that we, remember where this isn't the test data set, but basically it's a training data set that was partitioned and we trained with it and then we matched that against some subset of that data. So in this case, the training, I was always higher than the testing, right? Because we're curve fitting against the training data. And then the test, we can see that it kind of follows pretty close though, right? It's gen, I mean, there's obviously some differences in the data. And then what we do here is we are actually going to write out um, the submission name CSV file. We're basically going to write out a CSV file. So we trained against it. Then we ran this uh, against the test data, right? We predicted, we ran the prediction model against the test data after running the train cycle. Um, and then we write that out. And so it turns out that we just have some data to write out. And so now we have a CSV file with is basically a list of what we think of all the digits, right? So we had these 28 by 28. We went through the training cycle. Uh, now we run that model uh, testing the fit against the test data. We get calculate an answer for the test data and we submit that to Kaggle. And how do we do that? Well, the third file just does that. So it turns out <clears throat> they, um, they, you can just reuse this file for other submissions and it tells you which ones work and which don't. Basically, it does a Kaggle submit of the CSV file, and we can see here that the result that was uploaded was 200K. Um, and I don't know what this temp Kaggle error, I opened a bug report with them. And that's it. And I went really, oh no, only seven minutes and 42 seconds. And so that's actually kind of cool. Um, in this case, can I do this? If I were to submit everything here, restart and submit. Yep, and it uploaded. And then I can go to the submissions page and I can see that I did my submission and this is my second submission. Interesting, I got different results even though it's the same. And we can see that my score was 99.150% accurate or something, or, okay? Correlation was 99.150. And you can see that nine days ago I did the same thing. And that's it, so that is so cool in my opinion, but uh, humble opinion. We have NVIDIA AI Workbench that we're really just using as a platform uh, to do containerized um, GPU model fitting and training, all that kind of stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use their, uh, they have a bunch of example projects that you can do that build that have a kernel already and they're organized in a certain way. And this one's actually sitting on top of the Docker Python uh, GPU container from Kaggle. And that lets us participate in this digit recognizer. And in my case, everybody should get about the same results because we're using the same algorithm. You could probably tweak this, make more passes, change other things, get different numbers. That's it. Have a great day.